Come on, my son, get in there. How's it going, everyone? It's the Flying Pig here on Flying Pig United with a post-match reaction for you for the Christiansen versus Manchester United game that's just finished 1-0 to the Mighty Red Devils in Oslo. Have some of that, you bunch of Scandinavians. Um, yeah, fair play to you. I always loved a bit of Norway for some reason, but it was, uh, of course, I've got the, uh, the old Aurora Borealis behind me today. Um, it, we've gone over there. It was a reasonably successful game. Look, I'm not going to just absolutely massage the lads and massage Oli Gunnar because at the end of the day, it took a late penalty to beat Christiansen today. But what I would say is the, the scoreline, it did flatter Christiansen really. Yeah, they defended like absolute lions. I think this was more of a scouted mission for Manchester United to look at their back line and their goalies because they, they played three goalkeepers throughout the game. The first two were absolutely mustered and made all sorts of crazy, insane saves to keep us out. And their defence, the amount of last-ditch challenges, the amount of times in that first half alone, where uh, their defenders have just scuppered the ball out from reaching Anthony Martial time and time again. I thought they defended really, really well. Organisationally really, really good. So fair play to Christiansen, man. Just want to say respect to them, because they did put up a good fight against us. That was a big game for them against United, you could tell that. They were relishing the opportunity, they were loving the prospect of playing United. You could see that by how they defended and how they played against us. So I was impressed, let's say the least, with Christiansen. A couple of their players at the back, back there. The lad with the dreadlocks, the defender, I don't know his name, but he was really, really good. I thought that the, um, the first and second goalkeepers that they put out were brilliant. So it was just one of those days for United. We couldn't really get the chances created or the chances that we created finished off. We couldn't convert our chances. It was one of those. We were a little bit toothless in that sense. A lot of the shots that we did create right at the keeper or wide or whatnot, but we did create a lot of them. We had so many corners, so many balls into the box, just couldn't quite cap it off. Uh, let me talk about the first half performance. Obviously, you can see the, uh, the teams that started the game below at the bottom of the screen, um, but David De Gea, captain in goal, solid, didn't have much to do. There wasn't a whole lot of attacking phases from Christiansen, a few here and there. They had a good spell after half time, and they did hit us on the counter-attack a couple of times. Um, but it wasn't anything amazing in terms of them creating chances against us. So defensively, we didn't have much to answer to. David De Gea didn't have much to do. The defenders, obviously, we did select Phil Jones, no bones. Didn't really put a foot wrong, to be fair. Didn't have a lot to do. Lindelof, solid as ever. wan Saka, when he was on, looked solid. Um, the least impressive performance, I would say, from him out of all the preseason games that we've seen. But it was just the manner of the game, the way we were playing. Maybe didn't quite suit him. He didn't overlap with Daniel James so well on that right-hand side, as we saw in the last couple of games. But generally good all-round performance from the defence. I think Luke Shaw looked very, very good in the first half, actually. Going forward, creating chances. Dangerous. Uh, impressed from what I saw from him. Hopefully he can do it for United consistently. Um, we do evidently do need to get Harry Maguire in there. It's a blatant... Um, it's it's blatant. We can see it. it's staring us in the face. We need to get it. Hopefully it will happen. It looks like it's going to happen once that's in there. Then our back four should be pretty cemented. I know... Oli Gunnar's sticking Jones in there today. He's just in there as a little marker. He's in there as a marker for Harry Maguire. Do you know what I mean? He's like, well, that's where Harry Maguire will play. We'll just use Jones for now as to not upset anyone. Do you know what I mean? Because I can't imagine Jones is going to be featuring too much for United if we do sign Aaron Maguire. We need backups. Bailey's injured. We've got Twan ZB. We've got Smalling. We do need backups. Jones can play all over the place. But I was a bit surprised to see Jones out there because I'm not sure if Oli Gunnar's making a statement as to say, you are part of my plans. I am going to play you. Um, or it's just an opportunity to the lad to feel part of the squad there because he knows he's not going to feature much and maybe Oli Gunnar will look to move him on at some point. I personally hope that he does. Um, let's get on to the midfield performance then. In the first half, the team that started, um, I think that McTominay looked absolutely sensational in that first half. Really great, really great driving runs. Not afraid to have a pop. Lethal shot on him. Fighting his heart out. Playing with his heart in his sleeve. He is what United is all about, in my opinion. A good young lad coming through who will bleed red for this football club. That's what we need. Not to the, all these overpaid prima donnas. We need a bunch of McTominays coming through. And thankfully, we've got a few of those. I think he's looking like a very good player for us. The performance he put in was excellent. I thought him and Matic actually played pretty damn well in midfield together today. And I don't often say that because Matic is so freaking static. He's so static twatic, isn't he? And he just stays in one position and gets done for the whole entire game. But that didn't happen again today against Christensen, probably because we were totally dominating them for the whole game. But Matic actually 
looked pretty decent when he won the ball back a few times. He's got his head up. He's played some excellent forward passes, cutting the opposition defence open on a few occasions. Unfortunately, couldn't stick them away. But I thought he actually looked all right, oh, did, did old Matic. Still don't think he's good enough. Still think he's a bit slow. He's slowing down. But Oli Gunnar obviously thinks that he's got a job to do because he keeps selecting in this preseason. And when he has played, he's not looked too bad. I've given that. So fair play to the manager. Um, that gets us on to the, the lads up top there. Now, we played Marcio up top there. Quiet first half performance from him. He was trying to get on the end of things, but Christiansen's insane Gandalf, you should thou shalt not pass defence, just stopped the ball getting through to him time and time again. So he was frustrated today because he looked very good in the game against Spurs in that position. His movement caused them all sorts of problems. He had chances. He hit the post. He scored one. Today, different story for Martial. He's going to have to... Um, He's going to have to adapt, of course, because he's not played much, really, as an out-and-out -out striker. So he is going to have to adapt. He's going to have to learn different systems, learn how to play against different oppositions and things like that. But I'm not saying he had a terrible performance. I just It was quiet because we couldn't really get the ball to him. And that's not the fault of the supporting players, really. The likes of Lingard, who I thought had a really good first half, Harry and impressive and trying to create. I thought Rashford, who we played out there on the left, was bloody awesome at times because his, his pressing was so good, his pace was so good, he's turning over the ball, getting the ball back, getting his head up, making a driving run forward, getting a ball in behind the defence, having a shot. He was quite um, industrious in that first half, I'd say. And that was uh, exciting to see because if we are going to play Marcio up top there, which it looks like Onigon is going to favour having selected him there again today after that performance against Spurs and the fact that he's put Rashford out there on the left to see how he does there, I think that is going to be a role that he's going to be forced to play quite a few times this season. If you look at Martial's finishing ability, maybe Rashford's finishing ability. Perhaps Martial is more of a further along player at the moment. He's got to get that consistent to, into his game. That's the problem with him. But Rashford out there on the left today, I know we're only playing Christiansen, but because he's got so much pace, he's not afraid to have a shot. He's not afraid to take a man on. He makes great driving runs. Because of all those things, he does make a good sort of winger. And I've prefer, I've always said, I prefer, I think Rashford's natural position is number nine striker. And I still stick by that. But I just think maybe Marcia is more effective in that role at this at this stage in time. And then we can have Rashford play out wide there. He can create. He got a fantastic ball into Marcia at one stage, which was just cleared away um, by Christensen's awesome defence. So, um, yeah, it was just one of those games today, I think, where we've played well. We've played reasonably well enough anyway to score three or four goals. And we could have scored three or four goals if not for their last-ditch challenges, if not for their unbelievable goalkeeping saves, then United would have absolutely battered them. But they defended like Lions. They deserved the, the, uh, the, the draw in the end, in my opinion, because United just couldn't create that. That really clear-cut chance, it didn't seem like it was going to happen anyway until at the end when substitute Wan Mata came on the pitch and banged in a penalty. Um, and there's a lot of people criticising Wan Mata. I think he's still got a job to do. I think we need to use him correctly. He shouldn't be used out on the in wide positions. He doesn't have the pace. He doesn't have the physicality. But as an intelligent player to play sort of in behind the striker, look for runners, play lovely short passes, and make great runs like he did today um, to, to win the penalty then, you know, I think he's a good player and still has a job to do at United. Let's get on to Paul Pogba, who set the all-important move up. Um, he came on in the second half, looked pretty decent, I must say. Some of the passes that he played were excellent. Some of the um, uh, passes played unlocked Christensen's defence. For the penalty that we won, that was just an absolutely wondrous creative pass that he's played through to Juan Mata. It's a great run as well to peel off the defender and make the movement, but... Pogba spotted it. Pogba's vision is great. There's nothing. There's nobody questioning Pogba's skills and, and Pogba's vision. The problem is and the mental aspect of the game. But today he looked good. We're just playing Christensen. I want to see how he does if he sticks around. How he actually performs week in, week out. Because I'm not going to change my opinion of him until he changes it for me. Until he starts consistently performing for United. We've seen again today. He's got the abilities to unlock a defence. He's got the skills. He was always making dangerous runs and things like that. Um... I rate him, I do. I just don't think he's consistent and I don't think he's the leader type that we need. But if we can get some leaders in around him, who knows, maybe that could just happen. Um, from the substitute performances point of view, um, I want to talk about a couple of the players that came on that sort of changed the game, that looked decent, because there was a spell after half time where Christensen just got on top of us. Well, not really on top of us, but we just, we, we, we slowed down. The intensity went from our game. The high pressing wasn't so 
so uh, intense, and I know you can't obviously keep it up for the entire 90, but still, we had a bit of a poor spell. Oli Gunner seen that we needed a new uh, input into the game. We needed to change things up, and um, the great thing was that we were able to do that with the influx of youth and young players that we've got at Manchester United at the moment. He brought on Angel Gomez, he brought on Pereira, he brought on Chong, who again looked very good in the small cameo that we saw from him, if not for some good goalkeeping, could have had another, could have had a goal. Um, you know, we've got good players at United and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is prepared to give them opportunities, it seems. So there we have it. We got the job done in the end there. Juan Mata with a penalty. It's enough to get us the win. It's nothing to write home about, but I'm not going to say it was an awful performance because I truly don't think that it was. You can only beat out who's out there in front of you. And today, Christensen defended like Lions. They played really, really well. Uh, they made Manchester United finishing really cost us or potentially could have cost us because it's no good creating all these chances and whipping all these balls in and having all these corners and dominating possession in the final third if you can't stick the ball in the back of the net. So the lads had a good lesson today. It was a good test because we are going to come up against teams that get numbers behind the ball, that sit back, that defend deep with players uh, or the team behind the ball, and we're going to have to learn to break them down and craft better chances. So it's a good learning opportunity for the likes of Martial to figure out his movement, figure out some runs into the box, that sort of stuff, for the coaching staff to work on some stuff that's going to work between you know, linking up the likes of Rashford and linking up the likes of Martial, and then the other side, wan and Daniel James overlapping. There's some interesting things that, that we've got to work on that we can see we have problems at the back here. Um, you know, covering... Uh, it wasn't so much of an issue today because Christensen did, didn't offer much going forward, but we need to be able to cover, cover. It's all well and good pressing high and going forward and getting numbers forward, but we do need to. Pogba and McTominay and, and Matic and um, uh, Fred and these players that are going to be playing in those sorts of positions are going to have to learn how to play Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's system because there are a lot of times you saw it when Christensen got the ball back, how quickly they were able to move it on the counter-attack. It didn't come to anything, but they still got in dangerous positions and they still countered very quickly and dangerously against us. So we do need to improve on a couple of things, but it's been a good pre-season. I think this has been another decent performance where Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will learn a lot from the team. I think he will be very happy with the performances from McTominay. And I think he'll be happy with the performance from Daniel James as well, even though he, he couldn't quite make it happen. He still looked dangerous. He still took men on. He still caused them problems with his pace. And he still looks a very good young talent. But obviously, he's got championship experience. He's going to have to step it up and do the business for United. And it's difficult. It really, really is. I think Oli will be happy with this preseason. Now the order of the day is to improve the start in 11 before the start of the Premier League season proper. Chelsea game is a big one. It's a tough one. We've got to batter them. Uh, we need a good start. We need to relieve the pressure on Oli Gunnar and the squad. And to do that, we need to strengthen. I don't think we've got quite the players that we uh, that we need. We know we've got some good players, but we need to add Maguire. Bruno Fernandes would be brilliant. Talk of Savage. There's talk of Dybala. Swap deal for Lukaku. There's all this speculation. I'll keep you up to date with, you know, real concrete movements and happenings, what's going on. Um, but it's exciting. We are looking likely that we're going to sign maybe one other player now. You know, whether it's Harry Maguire or Dybala or whatever. Uh, hopefully two or three, but I don't think that will happen. But I think it's definitely going to happen that we're going to sign probably Harry Maguire. Everybody who's tuning in now to this live stream, thanks so much for stopping by on the channel. Do us a favor. If you're in here, smash a like on this video. I hope you enjoy my little ramblings there for what has actually been 13 minutes. I can't believe I've just been chatting cod shit for 13 minutes there. It felt like two minutes. So that's crazy. But thank you to everybody who's tuned in live to this post-match reaction show. I uh, um I uh, I uh, love to hear what you guys think about it. So get your comments in below. I want to hear what you guys think about the performance and some of the individuals out there today, and generally how you think it sets us instead for the start of the Premier League campaign. <clears throat> Comment from Fun Guy says, "Get in there, my son. Get in there, Fun Guy. Are you a toadstool, a mushroom? What sort of fun guy are you? Don't. I'm just kidding. I know. I know you're just a fun guy. Anyway, Jonathan M A A comments. Well, pig. What do you think of the potential Dybala Lukaku deal? It was always going to come up in this video. Let's talk. I think Dybala is a talented player. One that I'd like to see added to Manchester United's ranks. I think he's more of a technical, gifted player that would suit United under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and the way we're looking to play. Lukaku, not so much. Lukaku could go somewhere else, score 25 goals a season. He's a big, strong unit up there with good goal scoring ability we've seen that we've seen it in the Premier League we've seen it for United sometimes we've seen it for Everton 
and he will go and do, do good somewhere else. But I just think Oli Gunnar has been quite clear with how he wants to approach this, and it doesn't suit having Romelu Lukaku in there. I think he slows it down too much. He's not technically good enough on the ball. He is good at holding the ball up, and he can finish, but not to the level that we need. Certainly not while he's been a United player anyway. So he doesn't fit Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's plan. It makes sense to try and get somebody who does fit Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's plan, which could be Dybala. Oh. Thank you there, mate, for your comment, Jonathan. Neil Doffin comments, Haha, classic end, no problems. Brilliant preseason so far. Must say I agree with you. Um, nice to get the win at the end there because it could have easily been a nil-nil result. And, you know, we, we don't need that negatively. It's just nice to get the win. And even if it came by a penalty there and it was a bit of a ropey challenge, I must say, the goalkeeper obviously brought Mata down. But on the, re the replay I saw, it didn't look like there was much contact in it anyway. But we got the penalty and we've converted it and we won the game. Um, but you're right, it has been a good preseason. The way we've played, the way we've built up the game against into the game against Spurs. Uh, this game, of course, we've got AC Milan coming out next. Another good yardstick test for us. Let's see how we do that, hoping to batter them. And um, and the players have improved. We've seen players that have looked exciting. We've seen Daniel James at times. We've seen Wan Bissaka for pretty much the whole tour has looked like the missing link. He's looked like somebody that we really needed for a long time. Somebody who can come in at right back and, and really defensively improve us. That's what he can do. Um, he's shown that already in those few games. So impressed with him. This this game today was the is, is, is lesser performance of the bunch, but the other ones are amazing. I know he's going to be a good player for us. I'm not saying he's never going to make a mistake because everybody does, but I just think that he doesn't have as many mistakes as him as our, our previous options. So that's good. That's absolutely awesome. We've got a super chat here from Alex Rincon. Thank you very much, Rinconator. He says, I've noticed we struggle hard to break teams down when they sit back. Same happened versus Perth. Get Bruno in so we have more attacking options. Thanks for your super chat there, Rincon. You're a very astute lad, aren't you? It's an astute comment because I thought the same. I thought when you saw Christensen defended really well, very organised, a lot of numbers behind the ball especially towards the end of that game there. And United, although we were creating chances, we did struggle to break them down. And we saw that against Perth. We saw that last. We've seen that for years, actually. Um, and it happens. You know, teams don't want to give us opportunities. They don't want to give us space. They want to make it difficult for us. But we have to have the quality and the creativity in the team to be able to unlock defences. We saw it when Pogba came on. He started to do it for us in that second half a bit more. Uh, you know, McTominay was doing it. Matic, to be fair, we did it throughout that entire game. Um... But just lacking the final product. I mean, we did actually create things, but I do think adding somebody like Bruno Fernandes, it's only going to add goal threat. He scores goals from midfield. It's only going to add creative threat, assisting for his teammates because he creates from midfield. Big player, hopefully could translate into the Premier League immediately and do it for us. But it's all speculation at the moment. We, we shall see. I hope it happens. I really do. I hope we get Dybala, Fernandes. I hope we get um, uh, Maguire. That'd be great. If you got those three players in, got Lukaku off the books, sure, it'd be nice to get one or two more off the books, but I'd be pretty reasonably satisfied with that window because based on the team that we had just a few months before the, the end of the season, it would be a significant improvement. You know you've got a born leader in Maguire to come in and instantly improve us overnight. Our back four has been bolstered with wan as well, so if you look, we, our best back four would probably be Luke Shaw, Lindelof, Maguire, and wan -Bissaka. That is damn good it's a much better back line than it was anyway okay maybe still still need some work but it's much better i'd be much more satisfied going into games with that back four than like the one we put out in the last game with smalling or even jones today when those players are in there i am very very concerned especially when we come up against the top teams in the premier league and things like that week in week out they're just not good enough so i do think we need to improve there and then if you add that cre creativity in bruno fernandez and you've got that um that also creativity and also goal threat in Dybala, then you're going to have a pretty tasty improvement from last year. Thank you so much for your super chat there, Alex Rincon. You're a legend. <clears throat> Chance for show comments. Beautiful view there, pig. Thanks very much, mate. Aurora Borealis coming at you from Oslo, baby. It's pretty cold. Um, but no, uh, just got my couch here. I'm just literally just picked up my couch and stuck it in a pile of snow. I'm freezing my tits off. Um, no, it's probably pretty warm over there right now, isn't it? It's summertime. I don't know. Anyway, back to the game. 
Let's read your comments out then, lads. Obviously, I did a live stream match companion for the game. I'm going to do them for as many games as I possibly can this season, which is going to be most of them. Sometimes I will have to work where I just will not be able to get in, uh, get out of them. But Saturday and Sunday games, I'll definitely be doing live streams for now. Um, so please do tune in every single time there's a, a match. Come on, look at look if I'm doing a live stream. I should be doing it and get involved because I love doing the live stream with you guys today, interacting with you, watching the game along, commentating um really really enjoy it so please keep doing that also if you're in here right now on this show please do chuck us a like on this video it helps and also subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel always want to hear from new new subscribers new football fans let me know if you think i've said any any, any anything i've said in this video is absolute cod shit or if you think it's legit get it in in the comment section below and let me know before i go crikey i'm a poet um <clears throat> Neil Duffin comments, I'm the only one commenting here. Still looking forward to the start of the season. Last season, Monin, Jose, Maureen. This season, happiness, Maguire, Fernandez needed. Absolutely. He says, your show is excellent, mate. Keep it up. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Uh, thank you so much for getting in here and tuning in. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm looking forward to the start of the season for a change now. Last season with the Jose there, there was a lot of negativity. There was a lot of friction between players and staff. There was a lot of uncertainty at United. There was a lot of negativity between the board and Jose because they weren't giving him the players that he wanted and he made it public. No, it wasn't a good start to preseason and we were losing, man. So it really wasn't good. Live Forever comments, Wan always gives 100% like Herrera did. I agree with you, man. I've got no problem with Juan Mata as a United player at all. I think he's technically good enough. I think his effort levels are good enough. And I think if used in his own correct position, he would be good enough. That's what I think. Does that mean he's going to play all the time? Probably not. Um, but I do think he's a very useful player to have. Thank you very much for your question there. Muppet Crazy. How you doing, Muppet Crazy comments? Hi, we won four out of four games. Absolutely. Pre-season successful. Completed it, mate. Completed it, mate. No, really, we, we have done a good job. We've got AC Milan coming up. Then we've got Chelsea. That's the real test. That's the real game. That's the real biggie. That's the real important one. I couldn't really give a toss about preseason. I mean, look at Liverpool's preseason. They've lost every single game. Got absolutely mugged off left, right, and centre. But you know when the season starts because Klopp's had that squad. He knows how they play. They know what they're trying to do. You know when the season starts, they're going to be good again. So preseason only means so much. But it definitely does mean something. It's definitely helped Oli Gunnar out in team selection. It's definitely helped him highlight some of the players that can do a good job for him. It's definitely helped him highlight things like maybe Marcio at number nine. Maybe Rashford out wide on the left there might be a, something to consider. Greenwood has maybe got himself into contention um, for start starting games, which just a short while ago he wasn't really in the fold. Wan Basaka, instant right back hero. Um, so there's lots of things to take from it. Um, Anyway, guys, uh, just a few more comments here, and then I am going to have to wrap this live stream up. Buster B says, did you see Real Madrid get battered the other day? I did, mate. What an absolutely stunning result that was. Gareth Bale, if, if, it's, if I'm right in thinking, was laughing on the sidelines and things like that as they were getting battered 7-1. Crikey, man. I've got a question his professionalism and his commitment, really. I've always said, oh, I would like to take Gareth Bale at the club, but... I mean, I don't know. He seems like a bit of a tithead, doesn't he? If that's the case. And I know he did say something like, oh, I don't care if Real Madrid don't want to play. I'll just play golf and collect half a mil a week. And who really cares? So he does seem like a bit of a tool bag, to be honest. Um, but there we are. Anyway, lads and lasses, I'm going to wrap up this live stream. Thank you so much for stopping by. Smash a like on it before you go. I hope you enjoyed the game and the live stream commentary today. If you were able to tune in, keep a look out for upcoming live streams. I'll keep you up to date with anything concrete happening in the transfer window between Manchester United and any of these clubs around Europe that we're trying to sign players from. Um, so keep a lookout for them as they pop up in your sub boxes. You can follow me on uh, social media at Mr. Flying Pig HD. Please do that. I hope the sound audio quality and everything okay. It's okay today. Was a little bit rushed in setting it up, but um, hopefully I came through loud and clear and this doesn't look too freaking ridiculous. I need to take this hat off. It's the British summertime. I'm sweating my absolute tits off. Thank you very much, Bacon Brigade, for tuning in. <laughs> Take it easy. Have yourselves a good one. Get your thoughts and opinions in after this video has been published. If I've missed any of your comments in the comments section of the live stream, get them in in the not live comment section and I'll respond to them in due course. But again, just want to say thank you so much to everybody who does tune in and watch these videos. Uh, definitely makes my day um, and makes watching these United games even more fun because that game was pretty, 
you know, we, we attacked and stuff, but it's only Christensen, it's pre-season, but because I'm doing this, because I'm watching it along with you guys, and you're all bantering and commenting and getting involved, it just makes it very entertaining, so thanks for doing that. Anyway, this is the pig on Flying Pig United, take it easy, have yourselves a good one, come on United, that's four out of four, some good performances from the lads, more to come, AC Milan coming up, we're going to batter the Italianos, and then the season proper starts in a tough game against Chelsea. Can Oli Gunnar Solskjaer's lads do it. Do you think we've learned enough? Do you think we've achieved enough in preseason to set us in good stead for the start of the Premier League campaign? I've been the Flying Pig. You've been watching Flying Pig United. Stay classy. I know that you will. Have yourselves a good one and I'll see you very, very, very soon.